Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi there. Ooh, look at that. My bosom is showing itself. Okay, hold on. I'm going to raise the camera a little bit. There we go. There. <laughs> That's better. Ooh. I am so disorganized today. It's like a miracle I got from indoors to outdoors. But here I am, and thank you for joining me. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Hi, Joyce. Hi. And who's here? Hi, Jacinta. Hi, Sharon. So nice to virtually chat with you guys all right so let me get a little organized uh we were out hiking all day and oh hi teresa we were out hiking so i know it's you know i gotta say my heart is there for well for everyone um <laughs> uh, hi kit um uh, okay first of all kit cloud kicker I just got to say, I love your name. Also, I have a brother named Kit. So you get like double love from me just by the nature of your name, much less who you are and what you do. So thank you. Um, so my heart is there for everyone, obviously, as we all are. Um, but for people who are stuck in apartments or in like tiny townhouses, um, a special love. And what I want to talk about is actually, um, oh my God, I just got to walk you guys over to see this first. <laughs> Here we go. There's Donovan. Hi, Donovan. <laughs> all right. Sorry if I'm giving anyone vertigo with all this carrying you about. <laughs> okay. So, uh, first of all, how do you love my jacket? I got this in Mexico, in San Miguel. I know. And the hood can be worn, you know, like, super like old timey or whatever or closed up but it also like the whole jacket folds up in the hood and the drawstring hooks on a little thing and it becomes a purse so um next year when i go to mexico like i'm telling you guys come with me it is amazing there so hi dominique oh my god i would love to catch up with you like <laughs> offline I guess even though we're right down the road from each other um, so yeah <laughs> so um, I haven't been online for like a week and a half and I feel really bad that at a time when I'm receiving a lot of dramatic messages I'm not passing them forward however um, I had to go through kind of a uh, recalibration. So I want to tell you guys, when I was in Mexico, where I was was like a very sacred place. And I'm going to move this up. Everyone there is like wide open. Like it's not just people who train to become connected to receive messages like normal people, regular people, a lot of them are wide open. And when I talk with them about what I see when I'm out there, and when I'm out there, I can just like open up. There's no need for protection. It's all like good, loving energy everywhere. And there's like no difference between people who are alive right now people who were alive and are now dead, people who are just spirit, never took human form, people who are beings, like, like the ones on my jacket. It's like all these mist 
mythical creatures, but they're real. And when I would be out in the streets with my friends, especially in the evening around full moon, oh my God, like I would just be out and I would see everything from all the dimensions, everything as though it was all right here, 3D. And I would describe it to my friends who were like indigenous artists. And they're like, oh yeah, that's my uncle so-and-so. And oh yeah, that's a blankety blank. That's a, a being that looks after small children. And this person must be very pure that this is still with them. And like, and I said to them, how are you guys like, there's no doorway, there's no barrier. It's all together. Um, which is something that I've seen in very few places. Like for those of you in Virginia, the Land Celebration Center out on the other side of Winchester is the same. Um, you just have to open up and you'll see all the dimensions merge right there. Um, so I told them, you don't get it. Like where we come from, if you want to connect with spirit, especially for a group, you know, first you go in to the space and you clear the space and you put like protection around it, maybe a little sound healing, a little saging. You put like selenite walls around it, waterfalls of divine light with angels watching over them, protecting the area. As every person comes in, you cleanse them. You know, everyone, then you have to like go into meditative state, set sacred space, open up a portal, invite like angels to watch guard the portals to make sure no buggity boos come through. And then you have to maintain all of that while you open up for divine messages to come through. And people in Mexico are like, oh my God, why don't you just invite them in all the time? I'm like, because the energy around where we live can be pretty toxic. And there's a lot of very negative spirits around there. They were like horrified by all we have to go through. So the whole time I was in Mexico, I was just like wide open 24 seven. And if I was awake or asleep, all kinds of like, you're just constantly surrounded by sacred divine beings. And since I usually work on higher planes, I had a lot of old, like ancient gods coming forward. I was getting messages from people who were alive 10, 15,000 years ago, you know, creatures I'd never seen before. There was this um, white with a pale blue wash stag that kept hanging at a distance. And then finally an artist friend actually made me a beautiful work of art damn, it's insider, I'd show it to you right now. So cool of the white stag. And he explained to me who this, uh, oh, hi, Diane, uh, who this creature is. And, um, and after that, the white stag started working with me instead of being at a distance, it was bringing all these uh, mystical creatures to me. It was crazy. So then, of course, you know, we went through quite an adventure to get back here to Virginia from Mexico. We had to leave our trip early. And uh, like we would have gotten back yesterday, Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday this week if we'd been, but we wouldn't have been able to get back. We'd have to be in Mexico till the whole coronavirus thing is over. So uh, it's good we did when we did. But as soon as we got back, I had like a killer migraine, which is normal for me. Like whenever I get through a really intense, hardcore uh, time, when it's over and I get to relax and it's all good, I get a migraine. And also with like the bouncing between dimensions I do, I get, I've had like thousands of migraines in my life. So I knew it was a migraine, um, but it lasted for like two days. And then it took another two days to, for the, uh, you know, the ghosts and stuff to wear off. Like any of you who had migraines know what I mean. And, but I was feeling so toxic after that. And I was like, oh my God, I somehow got coronavirus and now I've just killed my family. Cause we've got my whole extended family here, you know, in the house together. 
And, um, but it wasn't, you know, no coronavirus, I'm fine. It was um, the energy here. I'd been wide open for six weeks and then I came back and I was wide open. So I was absorbing all the toxic sludge energy here. I was like poisoning myself. It felt like I had like um, a like food poisoning hangover kind of feeling, very toxic. So I had to sit for a few days in meditation and thank God Akashic Record librarians were with me the whole time and they like helped mentor me through everything. And yes, I'm aware of the fact that when I talk about my regular life, I sound like some like crazy woman, but that's me. Um, and I had to like rebuild my structure for being here in, um, in Virginia, so close to Washington, D.C. And all of this was by purpose. There were too many weird coincidences and things that had happened months ago that made sense now and stuff like that, that I was aware of the fact that all of this was in alignment with the path I'm meant to be on. Um, so everything that's happening now is happening as it's meant to happen. However, I mentioned all of that because I wanted you to know where I'm at and why I've been quiet. I've been like, I just had to meditate and get like totally recalibrated. But in the process, Cool, Chloe. Thank you. It's good to know I'm not the only one. This happened to her as well. Thank you. Um, in the process of getting myself back together, I became recalibrated in a new way. And of course, I mean, I was wide open for six weeks in a sacred place. So of course, things had happened. Um, so of course, I'm not going to be the way I was several months ago. But um one of the messages that came through to me from the Akashic librarians, and those of you who know me know that they're like my parents, you know, they, they raised me. Um, a great a Trump helicopter going overhead. Hi, Blackhawk. They're everywhere like being in Nazi Berlin. Um, so one of the things they said to me is now is the time for me to teach as many people as possible how to do what I do. And what they want me to start with is to teach people how to build energy grids, how to uh, flow divine energy into you, through you, and out to maintain your own health, especially for empaths. I mean, these last this last week gave me a big taste of what it's like to be an unprotected empath. And oh, no, oh my God, we have to nix that now. Um, so for all of us empaths, and um, yes, <laughs> My people, we're going to be tapping into very sacred divine energy so that we can be walking through a sea of toxic sludge. It doesn't matter because we're flowing with divine energy and it's going outward. So the toxic sludge has the choice of pushing further back or absorbing the divine energy and redefining itself as you know, source love. So um, uh, this is something that that I do very well. <laughs> and um, in my Pranashakti classes, like if you want to take it further and learn really, really well how to do it, uh, sign up for my classes in my online school. However, because there are certain things that I cannot just put out there for the general public, I've seen what happens when people who are not properly attuned try to use the more advanced work 
it I've seen it literally drive people insane. I've felt it drive me insane at times uh, without the, you know, like without the actual guidance, not like mad ax murderer insane or institutionalizer, but there is a kind of insanity that comes through when the realities are not mixing with cohesion. So you need to be guided through certain things. However, there are things that I can teach you that techniques that you can apply to your all the work you're already doing. If you're a Reiki person or a meditation or a TM, whatever you do. Hi, Patricia. Um, so um, what I want to do is give you a small attunement and then teach you a little technique. And I especially know right now it's not the time for any of us to be profiteering. Um, so yes, Kelly Pranashakti. <laughs> Kelly Thompson is here. She is a Pranashakti master and um, soon is going to be a brilliant master teacher, a totally amazing healer as well. Um, so there are certain techniques so that I can teach you where you're safe from going insane. And I can attune you now, even if you're not live and you're watching the video afterwards, it's okay. It'll work. Um, so there's a few things I want you to understand. One, everything is made of energy. It doesn't matter what dimension you come from, what frequency you resonate with, how solid or, you know, vaporous or whatever you are. Everything is made of energy. So it doesn't matter if we're together in person or if we're far away or even in other dimensions. Healing can happen. And this is healing in all directions. If you want to heal our planet or people you love and you don't have the resources within you to do it, you can open up and invite those who do, be they in this dimension, other dimensions, other frequencies in this dimension, other timelines in this dimension, it doesn't matter. The trick is learning the technique to open up and receive what it is that you're looking to receive so it can flow through you to whom you want. Since it doesn't matter if you're like physically together or not. Um, it's a matter of connecting with intention, connecting with thought, connecting with heart. Um, those of you who know me know one of my favorite quotes, Buddhist quote, is a happy man has an empty mind and a full belly. Which is, of course, it's a cute joke. It's a game. But what it means is we have three brains. We have our head brain, we have our heart brain, and we have our gut brain, the solar plexus, I mean, the sacral chakra brain. And the head brain likes to do action. It likes to like think and puzzle. It's very logical. So it wants to take charge. But what it needs to do is stay in the back burner until the belly brain and the heart brain are in cohesion. Once they're in cohesion with love and spirit, and keep in mind your sacral chakra is where your creative energy comes from. Hi, Romeo Angel. <laughs> so it's where your creative energy comes from and your connection with your guides, your guardian spirit, your gut instinct, right? You know when you go against your gut instinct, you regret it. And when you go with it, even if you don't know why, it's all good. When your gut and your heart are in cohesion, then they tell your brain, this is the plan, you make it happen. That's why a happy man has an empty head and a full belly. You bring these two together before you kick this one into gear. 
so that's a really important thing to work on. The majority of time that you dismiss your connection with your non-physical friends is when you're keeping a full head and an empty belly and a fear-filled heart. So my first homework with you is to follow the Buddha saying, a happy man has an empty head and a full belly. Start practicing that in your daily life. I mean, I know it's a fun joke, but it's also like really important. Um, so that's the first thing. Start trusting your gut instinct. I go ahead and I do things with trust and faith because my guides tell me to do it. I'm like, are you sure? Okay, it makes no sense to me. And then sometimes months later, I'm like, oh, that's why. So um, I want you to begin with that. I want you to also begin with knowing you're made of energy. And you can redefine your energy however you wish it to be. And your energy is not just the fleshy part contained within you. It's, you know, your aura. Like the promotion for this event, I had pictures of my aura. And some of you guys have seen videos of me where we photograph my aura back and back and back and back and back over a period of 10 minutes while I sit and meditate on the word love. And it will go from whatever color it is to those beautiful golden purple pink colors you know, over a period of, of just a few minutes by meditating on the word love. I'm literally changing my energy with one word and all the wonderful gooey feelings that go with it. So these are really important. Like when people ask, what are your practices? What is it you do? I say, I fill myself with love, trust, and faith. I don't know what's way down the road, but I know that every time I put my foot one step in front of the other, I can do it in faith that I'm being guided on a good path. And I know it because it all feels good. And the moment I get like, oh, I don't know what's going on, I stop and I talk with my guides. What's going on? Um, and by talk with them, sometimes I'm talking with myself or sometimes I'm talking with like conversations can be any which way. So, um, but the more you trust and have faith that when you feel good and in alignment, then you can go the next foot forward with trust and faith. So these are things I really want you guys to practice so much. If you're sitting with self-doubt and you open up to divine guides, you're not going to get that much. But when you work on your self-doubt and give it love and release it, and you open up to your guides, you're going to get a lot of the good stuff. So the next thing, oh, I miss Mexico because many of us are in a place where there's a lot of fear and anger and animosity and trauma going on. Um, we do want to give ourselves protection um, because you guys are just learning these techniques. So you don't want to open up and be vulnerable. So do whatever kind of protection you normally do that you're comfortable with. You know, that's okay. It can even change from time to time. However it is, you know, protect yourself, but protect yourself through love and fill yourself with love. And then here's where it gets good. Send your root chakra wide and deep, like the bottom of an hourglass. Let it really support whatever you're doing. When you open your crown chakra, your root chakra should always be bigger and stronger than your crown chakra. That way you never get top heavy. And you know how sometimes when you uh, open up and you're getting the good stuff and then you get vertigo or you get nauseous or, you know, you get pain in your head. Invite the root, the crown chakra to contract a little or to slow down. Expand your root chakra, not just deep, but wide. I will think of my energy as an hourglass, and I'm only worried about the crown chakra and the root chakra because when I'm flowing with divine energy, until I put intention into it, the other chakras don't matter. When I'm opening up, 
it's just crown and root and I'll, I'll literally I'll be adjusting okay that you know what I um, it's a little much slow it down a little bit crown chakra let's go a little deeper a little wider here I'm gonna push you guys back so you can see my so I'm like okay crown chakra go a little deeper a little wider all right spread out a little wider okay go deeper all right all right I feel good and the energy is flowing it's just flowing there's no blocks because I'm not even a part of this. I'm just a vessel of energy. I'm like, okay, crown chakra. Now you're feeling a little constrictive. So expand out a little bit. Okay. Go up higher. Higher. Let's see how high you can get. All right. I let my crown and my root know that my root should always be deeper and wider than my crown. So they, you know, with practice, they learn how to work with each other. When I open up, and especially if you guys are beginners with this, invite someone you love and trust who cares about your well-being to nestle in the top of your crown chakra. And they're like the gatekeeper so you can relax and not worry about what comes in you can invite your guardian angel you can invite someone you love who passed you can invite a beloved pet who passed you can invite archangel michael you can invite alien collectives whomever you want okay when i have gone deep i see a dozen women sitting in a circle around the heart of gaia which is a very bright sacred flame. This is an excellent connection. Yes. You know what? You would you're already connecting with with energy entities beings that can bring you good stuff. So chat with them, get to know them, work with them. That's that's awesome. When I open up because I'm an open channel, unless I ask for someone, I generally don't know who's going to come through um until they show up and that's the way i like it i i um yeah i got adhd i get bored if i'm working with the same being all the time so here's the thing uh a therapist friend taught me years ago any two relationships can only ever exist at the lowest common denominator now you know like if a couple just starts dating and they're pretending to be their best selves so they're up here they're like oh we're actually you know making an effort and then they move in together and eventually they drop and drop and drop and drop till they're here and then they're like why aren't you the way you were you know we have to honor who we are but understand if you want to talk with father joseph you need to match your frequency to Father Joseph. He will be glad to talk with you and he's absolutely awesome, but you have to get your frequency to be one that he can connect with. That's why it's good to start. Don't make demands on yourself. Start within your comfort zone. If you're comfortable chatting with the aliens, start doing this work with the aliens. If you're comfortable chatting with collectives or if you're an evidential medium and people who died are your wheelhouse, start with those you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm the ADHD poster child. Start with those that you are comfortable connecting with and grow your connection. Um, if you go on my YouTube channel and you type in my, my harness your inner fire, videos i have a lot of exercises for really building the energy centers in your body it's like weightlifting for energy work basically and there are exercises and lessons on how to get your structure your energetic structure strong enough that it can support more powerful work like you know like if you meditate and the frequency gets to a certain point and you drift away and you're like oh i don't know where i went but that was good the more you work your energy centers, the more you can take your focus all kinds of places. Um, but you got to start where you are. 
you know, if you're a beginner, don't try to go and bring, you know, advanced beings in to help you. Um, if you're comfortable with shamanic work, then animal spirits, nature spirits might be someone you start with. If you're angelic healers, start with the angels. Like stay, start with your comfort and grow from there. So I just threw a lot of information at you. And now I want to give everyone a quick attunement for opening up. This is my first time doing an online attunement, but the librarian said they were going to come through and help me. What I want each of you to do is um, be comfortable and happy. Remember what I said about inviting your root chakra to go deep and wide and your crown chakra. And then we have like two chakras here. We have our brow chakra, which is right here, and our third eye chakra. And we want to like open both of them up for communication. So as we do the attunement, it's you don't need to hold your hands here the whole time. I want you to start with hands here and you can put them on your temples if you want. Like I often like to, you see, have my thumbs on my, I can't see what I'm doing. I have my thumbs on my temple and my fingers here. And I might move them around a bit without even knowing why, what I'm activating. But um, start with them, or in the very least, here, here, you know, like one hand up or two hands up. And then as you feel comfortable, do what you want with your hands. No one's watching. You can release them. You can do whatever. And hi, Katie, we're just about to do the attunement. You're in perfect time. So put your hands, as so long as you touch your brow chakra and your third eye chakra, anything else is up to you. And remember, if you start feeling queasy or overwhelmed, invite your root chakra to expand. Invite your crown chakra to slow down. Maybe it's sending too much into you. Um, invite your body to relax and let it flow. Think of yourself as like a pipe and everything is flowing through. So it doesn't matter if you have any blocked chakras or personal issues because this has nothing to do with that. So put your hands anywhere on your forehead as long as you touch your brow chakra and your third eye. It's okay if your eyes are open and spaced out relaxed or closed or whatever you like. Think about the concept that we are each made of energy. And at this moment, we're many kinds of energy. You have the part of you that's in your physical 3D body. And you have the part of you that is in your etheric soul body that is watching over your physical body, connected to your physical body. At the moment, your physical body and your soul body are one in this dimension. They are one in different frequencies and different states. You are more than who you think you are. And at this moment, your soul body is a collective of all of the lives that you have lived, each of whom was once 3D physical and is now part of an energetic collective. Each of your past lives is complete on their own with full memory, ability, and they are one with all of your lives and with your soul. At this moment, you are your thoughts, your emotions, your instinct. You are all the molecules flowing in your body, vibrating. You are your chakras. You are a complicated being. 
And at this moment, you are connected to every dimension, every frequency, and every timeline. You may not have realized the connection. You may not have been, until this moment, cognizantly aware of the connection. But it has been there. And it continues to be there. At this moment, you have the ability to connect with any timeline, any frequency, any dimension any being. Open your mind and invite an energy, a frequency, a being that is already of your soul's acquaintance and has your loving well-being, your joy, your happiness, and your health as its great loving concern. Invite anyone or anything to slip in through your crown chakra and share with you a message. This message might be a feeling, it might be a thought, it might be a memory, Whatever you receive, a shudder running through your body is your message. Connect with the frequency. Invite the frequency of this being, this loving, caring being, to show itself so you can become comfortable with this frequency. Let it harmonize with you. Feel how it is compatible with your being. If in any way you feel overwhelmed or uncomfortable, invite it to be gentle and nurturing. Ask this energy if it wishes to give you healing love. and then invite it to do so. Invite the healing love to flow in through the top of your head, fill your being, and flow down through your feet. Invite the energy to emanate from you and just flow out like the glow from a light bulb. Invite this energy to flow into your organs, into your brain, your heart, your respiratory, if that is comfortable for you. Don't force anything. Just invite this energy to flow where it feels good.
And now we'll take it a little further. I want you to open your crown chakra completely, knowing that it's protected. Open your root chakra, spread it deep and wide. And you now have your original protector and you have this loving frequency or being. Let them harmonize with you to give you more strength, more gravitas, more frequency. Open up. And invite anyone, anything, any place to connect with you. What is coming through should be one that you can connect with now that you have these added frequencies for support. Feel if this connection is a memory from before you came to life or from a past life. If this feels like a soul contract connection, if it's a place reminding you that you are more than just a physical being of Earth, if it's a guide, a mentor, if it's someone, something, somewhere, some group that's here to remind you of why you are on earth at this time and what is opening up for you. You will feel that all of this is with love and caring and nurturing concern. If you are comfortable, invite this energy to fill you up and flow through you deep into earth where Paca Mama is happy to absorb it all. Emanate from you. If there's anyone in your heart that you wish to share this energy with, Bring their image to your mind and send your heart and this energy to them. As you come back from this, bring yourself back. It's all right for now to maintain this connection. You all can maintain it for the rest of the evening if you want, or you can hop in and out. Give yourself a moment. Hug yourself. I wanted to remind everyone tonight, as we're all beings of energy, we have the ability, another Trump helicopter about to come overhead, we have the ability to create whatever we want. And the more we create from love, the more love there is created. The more of us who... I'm so loud! <laughs> The more of us who come together as beings of love in a group, hi Nazi, uh, the more we can support each other. So we're not just little isolated 
lights here and there, but we become a giant network. What I'm going to do in the coming weeks, um, I'm going to do a lot of like short live streams. Um, and uh, you know, right now I'm being guided by the librarians, the Akashic librarians. Um, but what they're showing me is um, something I've been seeing for a very long time, like my whole life. And um, you know, the birthing process is not painless. And right now, Earth is going through a rebirth. They keep talking about present Earth and new Earth. In the old days, they used to talk to me about future Earth, but now they're calling it new Earth, which I find interesting. And what I always saw as way down the road, it's now all around us. Like any life challenge, and we've all been through our share of them, when you figure, when you fight it or you wallow in it or whatever, it just gets worse and harder. When you deny it, it gets worse and harder until finally you have no choice. It's like so awful, you have to get out or die, right? We've all been there. Earth is going through that right now. The sooner humanity comes together in love, and harmony and global caregiving, the sooner Earth will go forward. Some countries are doing that very quickly, you know. Uh, some countries like the US, I think, you know, we're wallowing in our challenge. So, um, so what I'm saying is stay healthy. You know, we've been hearing for a long time that as Earth is shifting, the people who can shift with it are going to be the ones that like have good stuff coming. Um, and the ones who insist on staying 3D are going to have rough stuff coming. That's now. That's now. The ones that will do really well, those of us are the ones that we accept the facts. Don't deny like this whole people keep saying to me, oh, I don't give in to fear based facts. I'm like, there's no emotion with facts. Facts are. Emotion is our response to them. And if you're afraid, that's okay. That is your response. Honor it, but then work with it. Don't dwell in fear. But we have to acknowledge facts. We have to use common sense. And we have to do it with as much love and concern as we can get through. Denying facts is not going to be helpful. Um, denying love is not going to be helpful. So live with the facts and flow with love. Take care of yourselves. Take care of those you love. Be really, really careful. You know, I want all of you to be alive six months, a year from now. Um, and what they're showing me, this is just the beginning, and it's not just coronavirus. They've, they're showing me a lot of stuff, but that's for another live stream. Um, but what we learn in Prana Shakti is how to open up, very similar to how we opened up. Of course, in Prana Shakti, we become attuned for this. But you open up to every frequency of every dimension through the resonance of love. And you invite whatever is needed to flow through you. It's similar to channeling. It's similar to doing etheric surgery, right? Um, but channeling will be whatever is coming through in the moment. Etheric surgery is the etheric surgeons. With Prana Shakti, we open up to it all. But we're specially trained for it. And there's a few of us pranashakti people here on the live stream so you guys know we train for it we attune for it we practice it we learn certain techniques that allow us to open up to every frequency of every dimension through the resonance of love and i work with multiple timelines as well so it gets kind of freaky sometimes 
But you don't have to be a Prana Shakti master to open up through love. Every single one of you agreed to be on our planet at this time. Every one of you is soul contracted to be aware of the powers that you have within you to join with the healing of our planet. So when you open up and you open up with trust that your guides who's soul contracted to help you at this time will be there, they will be there. Trust them. Now, again, those of us like in the DC area, it's so energetically ugh, around here. Do your protections. Do whatever you need so that you can feel comfortable that whatever comes through is what you need for what you want to do. If you find yourself feeling fear and anxiety, yeah, that's understandable. Honor it and give it love. Uh, I'll do another live stream on how to deal with the fear and anxiety. I have a technique that's really helpful for that. But um, for now, let's see, it is 7.53. So the t technique we just did tonight of opening up, please practice that. Practice that often. You don't need to do any formal ceremonies. All you have to do is like ground yourself and open up and you'll find with repetition you get more comfortable with it and you get more comfortable with expanding and contracting your root and your crown chakra and you're flowing with the divine love. Now I know a lot of you are like, oh, but I have a blocked heart chakra. Oh, my sacral chakra, this issue, that issue. This has nothing to do with that. Believe me, I got as many issues as any other person on the planet. In this technique, it has nothing to do with who you are in this life. It's who you are as an eternal being. And who you are as an eternal being is divine love and light. So the more you allow this energy to become with you, one with you, in your flesh and blood self, the more you'll find a lot of those blocks or issues start going, you know what, I feel supported now. I can work myself out. Or... I don't need to be the anxiety anymore. It's very therapeutic for you. And the more you are flowing with this energy and it flows from you, the more you are helping others around you just by being who you are. Even if you're in solitary, it doesn't matter because the energy is flowing. The energy is flowing and it will find where it needs to go. I will do the meditation I told you where I just like send my root out, open my crown up and I come through and I'm like, is there anyone in my neighborhood who needs some divine love? I invite my guides to connect with their guides and send it through me to them. Now, I have techniques where I let my soul connect with their soul and so it goes like straight from there. But I've been doing this exercise a long time. I can get my root chakra and my crown chakra really deep and wide. I love you too, Patty. So, but practice it, play with it. I mean, if I can get my soul to connect with other souls of people in my neighborhood and send them healing, while it's also sending energy to me for my family, you know, you can do that too. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, thank you. I hope this made sense for you guys and, um, and that it's useful. Um, you know, I'm here for you. I'm back. I'm, I'm having trouble being fully grounded these days. Um, uh, this new reattunement I've gotten has me like a little flaky right now, but that's okay. I'll get there. But I'm here. Feel welcome to reach out to me, message me, um, and I'll I'll do my best to be there for you all. Thank you. I love you guys, and it's going to be an interesting year. I can tell you that. But the more of us who just flow with love, while using common sense, keeping ourselves and those we love safe 
the more common sense people flowing with love there will be on the other side of this. So, thank you. I love you. Have a wonderful night. And remember to love yourself. And invite your soul to love you. Invite your guides to love you. Because you're all freaking super lovable. Bye.